let's get started creating button interaction. We're going to need to create the methods that the buttons call when they're pressed. Start by organizing the folders we're going to put our scripts in. Let's right click on Assets, create a new folder, and we'll call that Scripts. Let's then go into that folder, right click, create another subfolder, and call it API. Now let's create our API script. We go into that folder, right click, and select C Sharp Script this time and we'll call this script API. We can now double click on the icon and it'll open it in Visual Studio. When you create a script in Unity, it comes preloaded with their template for inheriting their mono behavior class. Since this is gonna be a regular class, we're not going to need any of this. Let's go ahead and select it all and remove it. Now let's write public class and call it API. Let's create a public static of type string and call it FM server. This is going to be the address for the FileMaker server that you're going to make the calls to. We're going to put in the URL that your server is located at, followed by a forward slash FMI, forward slash REST, forward slash API. And the rest of the URL that's going to come after this, we're going to go ahead and write in another script. Let's go ahead and save this, and we can return to Unity. Now we're going to create a script called API key. It's going to house the methods that we want to call to get the key from FileMaker using the REST API calls. So we're going to right click, create a new C Sharp script, and call it API key. Let's go ahead and double click on it to open up that script. This time we're going to use some of the template. Let's go ahead and remove this middle section. Let's start by creating some variables. These will be private constants of type string. We have the remainder of the authentication string. We have the username and the password that we're going to key in in just a moment. And we have the login layout, which is a parameter that we're going to need when we make the call. Let's pop back to Unity. OK. So what we want to have happen is when we click the Authorize button, we want it to send out a request with our credentials and get a token back. That's the token that we're going to use anytime we make a request. And so we're going to want to store that token. We're going to need to store it in data somewhere and then write the methods or functions that are going to make that request. We'll go back in our script. Let's roughly outline it. We're going to need an authentication process to get the API key. And then we want to process that response to get the key and store it so we can reuse it when we need to make a request in the future. Let's create a method called FM Authorize. Let's create an instance of Unity's www form. Now let's create the headers. The headers are a dictionary string value pair. We're going to set the headers to the content type application slash JSON. Let's create a string variable to store the credentials that we're going to pass. And now we need to quote the variables and escape those. Now let's convert that string into bytes and create an instance of the www class and call it request. This is where we'll put in the variables, the FM server plus FM authorization, the form data, and the headers. Next, let's start a coroutine to process the response and store the key if it's valid. Let's go ahead and test it. Let's create a public stream for the response. Now let's output that response to the console so we can see it. We're almost ready to test. First, we're going to need the username, the password, and the login layout for the FileMaker solution we're going to connect to. To make sure your FileMaker file is configured correctly, I highly recommend a blog article by Wim DeCourt with Salient Consulting. I'll post a link in the description. Check out his article on the Salient Consulting site in the article, he walks you through the configuration and the process. He got me past many of the roadblocks I experienced when I had first started, and he does a great job explaining and providing sample files that you can download. These include the FileMaker files, as well as the collection files for an app called Postman. Postman is an HTTP client for testing web services, 
and it'll assist in testing the configuration. I'm using WIMS file for the FileMaker side in this tutorial. This should make it a lot easier, as all of the settings will be the same. If you follow his tutorial and set up the same files in your server, then you should be able to use the same username, password, and layout as found in his tutorial. And you should get similar responses. So those are the three values that we're going to key in. Let's go back to our API key, set the user, password, and login layout. Lastly, we need to go back to our API, and we need to change where we'd put yourserver.com, and that actually needs to be the server that you're posting the files to. Back in Unity, we want to attach the API key to the button, so let's go ahead and drag it up and drop it on the button. Then when we click on that, you can see some of the boilerplate, image script, button script, and then if we scroll down a little bit, you can see the API key script that we attached. In that, you can see the response text that's exposed, and then we have an on-click event that's being monitored by the event handler. Now let's add in an action for when they click it. We're gonna set it for both editor and runtime. This way, when we're testing in editor, we'll get the response. The onclick event needs an object to reference. Since we attach the script to the button in the scene, we can drag that button down into the onclick event for reference. Now that we have reference, we can select the no function pulldown, go down to API key, and then select the FM authorize method from that script. So now that that's set, when we click the button, it'll run that method and we should get a response. Great, let's go ahead and select the console so we can see the debugger and go ahead and hit play. In the game window, let's click the authorize button and there's the response. We've got our token, we've got our layout, login layout, and the error code is zero, result is okay. So everything looks good. Let's hit stop and let's go in and make some more edits to that script. So instead of sending the response text to the console, Let's send it instead to the TextMesh Pro text object that we had created that we had named response. First, let's change that string variable to a TextMesh GUI variable. And then in order for that to be referenced properly, we need to add using TM Pro to reference the namespace. Now that we've added the namespace, you can see it's resolving properly. And I had missed the pro part on the UGUI. And now it's going to send it to the TextMesh Pro UGUI response text. Since we changed that, we're going to also need to change the response text below to reference a text parameter of the object that we're now calling it. So we'll add a dot text on the end of that. Now we'll go back into Unity. Give it a second to recompile. And now you can see that response text is looking for a TextMesh Pro UGUI object. So let's find the response object that we had created. That's TextMesh Pro object. And we'll drag that over to the response text. In order to do that, it's sometimes helpful to select the object you want to put it on. We'll go over and click the little lock icon at the top of the inspector window. That will keep this in the frame. And then you can select an object on the left-hand side and easily drag it over to a location within that inspector. And don't forget to unlock that when you're done. So now you can see the text input area in the response object is where we're intending that response to go. So let's go ahead and click play, click authorize. And now you can see that the response information is being loaded into the response text object that we had created and is being displayed on the screen. Great. Now we want to store that token so we can use it for additional calls. So let's go back into our script. Let's go ahead and clean this up in case it doesn't get a response. So now if it doesn't get a response, we'll get an error. So let's go ahead and create a class to store our credentials data. We'll go back into Unity, right click in the API folder, and say create c -sharp script. We'll call it credentials. Double click on it to open. Select the center section. We're not going to need that, so let's remove it. And this won't be inheriting from a mono behavior, so let's remove that as well. And we can remove some of the unneeded namespace at the top. Let's make this class serializable. Let's go ahead and set a public string called token, a string called layout, a string called error code, and a string for result. Then let's set our constructor class, credentials, to create it from the JSON string. Let's switch back to the API key. We'll add in an instance of the class, call it session. Now let's load an instance of that session with the response text. Actually, let's not make that static. 
and let's comment out the debug log. Great, now we're ready to run it. Let's go back into Unity. Now that we're back in Unity, you can see that the API key script has been updated, and it's got the session object with the token, layout, error code, and result. Let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. Let's go ahead and click Authorize, and we've got a response. You can see we've loaded up our session object with the data. We've got the token, the layout, the error code, and the result. This concludes the third video in our Unity and FileMaker REST API set. We hope to have more videos in the future exploring FileMaker and Unity using the REST API. If this is something you're interested in, drop us a line, let us know, and we'll send you an email when they're available.